Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 10 of our point and click series in Unity. So for the past several videos, we've been working on getting our network ready, moving around our scene, and really being able to point at stuff. Now let's get into the actual clicking and interacting with our world, and really the core of what the gameplay is for this kind of a game. So in order to actually interact with our props that we have in this world, we're going to need a new class of um, scripts called interactables. And these are kind of the, um, in the same way that nodes have locations and waypoints and things like that, um, interactables are going to have a series of kind of subclasses that will determine how we interact with these different props. There are going to be four types of interactables. The first I'm calling image viewers, and these are probably the simplest. These are basically going to be where when you click on them, an image is kind of popped up onto a canvas in front of you. So it's, for example, if you had a book, you could click on it and maybe see a page of that book, or if there's a picture that you want to show in greater detail, things like that. Um, just kind of creating a flat image so the player can easily see what they're supposed to be looking at. The second one I'm calling an observer. This is um, kind of the 3D um, analog to the image viewer in that you're going to, instead of seeing a flat image, you're going to see the 3D model be able to rotate it, interact with it, manipulate it, maybe, you know, affect something on it. But it's basically giving you a closer look at some prop. Instead of it just sitting on the table, you can actually look around it and stuff. Third one is called the switcher. This is going to be things like um, buttons, levers, might actually be like a light switch or something, anything like that that's going to affect other stuff throughout the scene. Um, this is going to be a little bit more of a complex one because we're going to have to start getting into the game manager and determining how all of our objects interact with one another. We're going to have to start saying, oh, when you hit this switch here, this light turns on over here, and how those things know that they're supposed to communicate with one another. And the last one we're going to do is called a collector. This is might not be something that you need in your game in particular, but I think it's going to be worth knowing because some games will require these. This is something like, um, it was really popular in games like the Monkey Island series, where you're going to, as you're exploring the world, you're collecting different items, and maybe you need to use those items in different places. And so it's going to be kind of keeping track of what you have on you, taking stuff out of the scene, putting it into your inventory, bringing it somewhere else, using it there, things like that. This could be just as simple as you find a key and you need to use it in a door, or it become much more complex depending on what you're looking for in your game. Um, the other idea of this is not just in inventory, but also maybe just a held item. Um, games like the first Myst game had where you would pick up a page and you would carry that back with you to um, the Mist Island, but you could only ever hold one item at a time. That was really based more on the limitations of the uh, technology, technology at the time, I think, but could also have some interesting game design ideas there. So over the next several videos, we're going to be looking at these different types of interactables. Today, though, we're just going to get our base interactable built and ready to go. So in order to start this, we're going to need a new type of um, component that we can add to our props. So for example, right now we have, if we go to our table, we have this blue cube here. Uh, we'll focus on that. And this blue cube um, has its prop script right now. We're gonna add a new type of script to this, which is going to be the interactable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our scripts folder. And as we see right now, I've actually uh, done a little bit of organizing here. I created a camera folder that has the um, camera rig and the mouse POV controls in there and then nodes, which is holding all of our node and location and prop information. Game manager I'm keeping out right now because it's gonna generally be, once we start building out our game, a much more important script, so I'm keeping that at the root level. So I'm gonna create a new folder, actually. So we'll create folder, and we're gonna call this interactables because we're gonna have several scripts ultimately. Um, interactables are ultimately going to be an abstract class that a lot of things inherit from. But for now, we're just going to create the initial interactable script. So interactable. And we can open this up in Mono Develop. So our interactable script, like I say, eventually it's going to be an abstract class like our node is. But for right now, we're going to keep it um, not abstract because we're going to just add that to our objects for this video. Um, in the next video, we'll probably make that abstract and start using the subclasses. Um, so we're gonna stick with interactable here. However, we're gonna add something uh, just above this, which is 
really that when we create an interactable, it's only going to be on a prop. We're never going to want it on a waypoint or a location because there's, those are just more spaces that you can be and they're not things that you can touch. They're not things like that. So we're going to add a require component call here, which is require component type of prop. And this is just a little um, kind of a fail safe that if we ever absentmindedly try to add an interactable to something that's not interactive, it'll tell us, oh, you can't do that. Now we don't need in this um, an update function. However, we are going to use our start function because how this interactable script is going to work for us is that when we get to the scene where the prop is or when we get to the node where the prop is, then we're going to want to turn on this interactable script because that's going to let us know, oh, now we're here, we can inter start interacting with it. But until that point, we want this interactable script to actually be disabled and kind of tell us, oh, it's, it's the props here and it will eventually be interactable, but until you get to me, you can't mess with me. So what we're going to want to do is in our start function, we're going to say this.enabled equals false. And so what that's going to do is that's going to disable just this one component when we first start our game so that um, we're kind of controlling, kind of like how we had our colliders have to all turn themselves off at the start of the game. Likewise here, we don't want stuff to be interactable when you're across the room from it or in a completely different location. In addition, we're going to add a simple public function and we're gonna call this public void interact. And this is just gonna be, this is gonna be um, a function that we're gonna override on almost every case because this is what's going to, in the image viewer, say it's gonna turn on a canvas and put an image in there. For our observer, it's going to maybe go to a separate camera that has the view of the object that we're manipulating. Um, but right now, we're just going to have this sort of a placeholder one here in our base class. And all that's going to do is simply say debug log. We're going to say interacting with, and then we're going to add the name, plus name, name. And so all that's going to do is tell us basically, once we get to this object and it becomes interactable, if we click on it again, we just want it to say, you're interacting with me. So, you know, purely, purely testing at this point. And that's all we're really going to do with our interactable script right now. What we really have to do a little bit more coding with is when we're in the node that has this interactable, because like I say, what we're going to do is we're going to arrive at that node and then turn on this interactable script. So, in order to do that, what we need to do is actually go, we need to write a new arrive and leave because right now we have in our node, when we arrive, we are setting the current node, we are um, moving the camera where it needs to be, turning off our collider and turning on our reachable nodes colliders, doing all those, all those things, which are all still important. But we want to do those, but then we also want to work with this interactable script. And we could do that in our node, but we know that locations and waypoints are never going to have an interactable script. So there's really no need to be doing it for every single node in our game. We only want to do it in our props. But we, that means that we need to somehow alter this arrive and this leave script from when it's just a node to when we're in a prop. And the one, of, one way we're going to do that right now is we're going to add the word virtual to our arrive script and to our leave script. And what that does it says um, when we're in a node, we can still call arrive and leave, but there is a chance that we can override it. And that's what, exactly what we're going to do in prop. So we're going to save that. And now we're going to go into prop. And we're going to say, oh, and make sure when you use virtual, you make it public as well. Because if you just have a virtual script, um, there's nothing that can call on it to override it. So now in prop, we're going to say public override. And you'll notice that once you do that, it gives you options. Because we're inheriting from node, it gives us both arrive and leave because we made them virtual. So we're going to say public override arrive. And the other nice thing is it gives us this base arrive, which we want to keep. We do want this, um, this arrive function to still do what the original arrive function does. We're just going to kind of modify it in some ways before and after it. The other thing we're going to add to this, actually, we want to, I'm going to want to add, um, before we even get into our functions, is a variable, and it's going to be a call to this interactable variable. So I'm going to say interactable, or this interactable component, rather. Interactable, and we'll call it inter. I like to 
prefer to do three letters, but I can't just do int because that's a struct and we can't use that. I'm also going to add a public, uh, or not a public, sorry, a void awake function. And what this is going to say is um, enter equals get component interactable. And so what this is going to do is if our prop that we're currently in, or for every prop in the scene, if that prop has an interactable component, it will put it into enter and we can re reference it there whenever we need to. If it doesn't, it'll just be null and that's fine. That'll actually work really well for what we're going to do here. But that gets us that reference now so we don't have to continually get the component every time we want to. So in our arrive function now, the um, first thing we're going to do is when we we're look let's look at this when we first arrive at that prop. So you know we're we're standing at the table now we want to look closely at that blue box. So we click it, we go to arrive to it. Once we've arrived at it, now we want to make it interactable. We're going to say we're here now. You know this is our current node. We can be interact. Now we can start interacting with this box. So once we've arrived, after we arrive, we can say make this object interactable. And how we're going to do that? It's very simple. We're going to first make sure we have an interactable component here. So we're going to say if enter, oh, no, 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 not that. We want just enter. If enter does not equal null, then what we can do is we can say um, two things. One, we want the collider to be activated again. Because remember, in arrive, if we go down here, we deactivate our collider. So we want to make that uh, um, we want to make that active again and we also want to make our interactable um, component enabled as well. So how we do that is we're going to say col and we have access to that because we are inheriting from node. So we can just say col.enabled equals true. So that'll become active again. And we're going to say enter.enabled equals true. So what this does now is says, when we get to this interactable thing, if there is an interactable component on it, make it, make it, make it active. And make sure the collider's on again so that we can still detect when we click on it. So now, so now we've, made it in, we've made it interactable. If interactable is active, what do we do now? Well, the next time we click on it, we're still gonna be getting this call here, this mouse down call that's gonna still call arrive, but we wanna kind of preempt the arriving. So we're going to do something before arrive here. We're going to say if enter does not equal null, so if there is an interactable component and enter is enabled. So if we're that way we know not only is there that component but we're here. We're ready to interact with it now. And the nice thing is if there isn't if this is null, it won't even check this. So we're not going to throw any errors of oh, you're trying to check something that doesn't exist. It's, um, it'll check this first, it exists, and it's enabled. Then, instead of, instead of arriving, we want to go to our interactable and interact with it. So how to do that is we're gonna say enter dot interact. And we're just gonna return here. We're gonna, if, if we can interact, we can just leave. We don't need to do all this again because we've already done it. We'll hit save. And the only other thing we need to do here is we also need to do our leaving, uh, be sure that we turn off interactable when we leave. So we're gonna go public override, and we get leave, because we made that virtual as well. Keep the base leave, because we still want to do what we're doing when we leave it, but we're just gonna simply say down here, in addition, if enter does not equal null, then we just wanna make sure that enter.enabled is false, so we're gonna turn it back off again. So now we can go back into Unity. And if we, let's click on our cube here and let's make sure we add that component. So interactable, you can either, you can either drag the script on or you can search for it. And so there we go, we've got it here, interactable. We will save our scene quickly and we'll hit play. And so when we start, we see that this has turned itself off. Right now, our cube is not interactable. 
If we then go to click on the table, we move to the table, and then we can move to the cube. Uh, that's doing something a little bit weird for us. We're saying variable of collider, variable collider of prop has not been assigned. Oh, and I know why that's doing that. Because node has its own awake function and I added a separate one here. So what this is just doing is actually just flat out overriding this. So what we can do, we can actually just make this a start function instead. And that's actually going to help us in a couple ways. Um, so this will still happen. On awake, we'll get the collider. And then on start, we'll get the uh, interactable component. Um, it's not the most efficient way of doing this. We should probably actually do another virtual and override, but for time saving sake. And one other reason is that if we have a start function here, we get this checkbox on our script, which um, I'll show you why that's important in one second. So I'll hit play. Okay, there we go. So now, um, now we have our collider on here. So now we go to the table. Now this is now, it's interactable, or it's not, sorry, it's, we can click on it, we have our collider, it's reachable, but it's not interactable yet because we're not actually at that prop. But now if we click here, we still have our collider so we can still click on it and it's now interactable. So if we click on this once more, now we're actually going to do the interacting with it, which right now is just going to be debugging the phrase um, interacting with blue cube. So now we click here and sure enough, interacting with blue cube, we can click again and again, does that. If we right click, we should back out back to the table. We can click on our sphere. Now our sphere does not have a interactable, so nothing happens when we click on it once we're there. But if we go back and then go to our cube again, once again, that becomes interactable and now we're interacting with it. And when we back away again, that turns off. So this is really the, um, the simple functionality that we're gonna be using so that when we can always go to a prop and once we're at that prop, now we can start interacting with it and affecting the game state. So um, that's gonna be it for this video, but in our next video, we're gonna get into that image viewer and start to see how we're going to um, be able to view um, sprites and um, images that we want to include so that our players can, you know, maybe start getting clues and information about the world that they're in. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.